You see, God made every one of us uniquely. What did I say? He made every one of us what? Uniquely. In other words, we were specially designed such that no other person can be like you. The truth is no other person should be like you. And a true leader is not one who um, labors to get people to be like him, but helps people to become the best of them. Because nobody can be like you. Nonetheless, there are values. Hello? There are values or attributes or can you get it in the um, message version? Attributes or um, characters that we can emulate by scriptures gifts on individuals we can aspire to accomplishments that should motivate us are you see here just like the scripture says be ye followers of me little children as i'm a follower of christ you understand that is emulate me the way i emulate christ now that doesn't mean become like me why because there is no human being whether anointed or unanointed in quote that is so perfect enough for another man to aspire to not even his ideas You see, one of the reality that dawns on a man who has found Christ and understands the gospel is that you are built uniquely and specially. Now, why would bookmark this and you're getting that? Take me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. It's very important to understand this. You see, in a world where we have the system mounting pressure on us, or let me use the word systems, the financial system, the family structure, family system, the government structure, government system, the societal system and norms, The eighth grade system, all mounting pressure at the same time. It is so easy for an individual to, number one, be misguided. Number two, have your priorities misplaced. Number three, also so easy to make erroneous choices what do i mean by erroneous choices making the right decision at the wrong time or the wrong decision at the right time and at worst making wrong decisions at the wrong time that's almost terrible but they're almost all the same because it leads you nowhere 
right decision, wrong timing. Wrong decision, right timing. Wrong decision, wrong timing. They're all the same. Leads you nowhere. But you see, when you come, when you, you when you, when you, when, when, in the world where we are right now, the tendency to, to make all such mistakes with our lives, all such choices, such um, misappropriation of everything is there. So easy. And at such a time as believers, we must remind ourselves of who we are. You've always heard me say that the gospel and the scriptures, the gospel of Jesus Christ to us that we learn, we made to understand when we study the scripture to understand who we are in the gospel of, or what the gospel of Jesus Christ is, that is what he is, what he has done, who he is to us, what we are to him. What he has made us and what he has given to us. Now, they are not all the same things I've said. Who is Jesus to you? Who is he as a person? Who is he to the world? Who is he to you that is born again? It's a different relationship entirely. Who is he to the Father God himself? The same thing, who is God? What's his relationship with the Son and with us, his children? Praise God. And then what is my relationship with God? What's my relationship with Jesus? Who am I as a Christian? Then what has Christianity given to me? What has what salvation given to me as a saved one? When I say I'm born again, I believe in Jesus. What is the benefit? What has been handed over to me? What did Jesus do? All this has to be understood. Now, as we listen to the word of God, the teaching of his, the word of God, through his servants given to us, and studying our Bibles and all whatever way we, we study, and we begin to find out these truths. They are not for us to feel good alone. No. It's not just to affect your emotions. Even though it will. There are realities showing you who you are. Your placement in God. Your placement in life. There are realities that exposes to you your weapons on how to win. In other words, there are tools you must engage when challenges are right before you when pressures mount around you you don't throw them aside many christians you know they come to church they get so excited they get so blessed then they go home some even at home they just finished listening to the word of god or studying the word of god they're excited the next challenge their reaction is as though they never heard anything you know what james calls such a man he said, he that looketh into the perfect law of liberty that gives life, he says, when that man is not a doer of the word, when he's not a doer of the word, when do you do the word? When you're faced with challenges, when you're faced with demands or pressures of life. He said, when the word of God is void at that point of your choices and your actions, he said, it's like a man that literally went to the mirror. I know years ago I like to make fun of this. When ladies used to tell me, say, Pastor, you like looking at the mirror a lot. I said, well, the Bible didn't say the mirror was for women. It says for a man. I say, ah, it's not the Bible. I said, James said, it's like a man that looks himself in the mirror. He didn't say a woman, praise God. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. That's just a joke, okay? Just to get your attention. Praise the Lord. So all men who like looking at the mirror, but don't go get the pink feminine one. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you understand? Okay. Now, it says it's like a man that looks at himself in the mirror. 
James 1 24 and goes his way and straights away now you know when you read this um, it's an allegory what does that mean what it means is it's not just saying that you forgot your face it means it's saying you're acting like a confused man that's a simple rendering of it like Paul says in the preaching of the cross or the resurrection from the dead like some argue is not real he said those of us who have believed we've deceived ourselves he says of all men we are miserable if what we preach we don't believe that's what James was trying to say the same thing he said if you don't apply the word at the time when it's needed you're just like that man who finished dressing now just imagine when you went to the mirror you wanted to see how you looked on it right am I right and right on the mirror you saw that your hair was well combed there was no stain you looked right into your nostril there was nothing there you looked at your collar it was well you know folded off and then your tie was well positioned everything was in order and you just turned and then your wife said honey why are you keeping up a gray hair? Say, sorry? Are you okay this morning? Do you understand? Because you just turned. I mean, you've not even left there. Nobody was with you. You just turned. And now, your wife says, you've got gray hair. One of you surely must be mad. Or must be pulling a prank on, on each other. Am I right? On, on the other. I say, hey, hey, is that a joke or are you okay? I say, no, no, you got gray hair. They say, come. Are you sure you're not drunk this morning? Because I just turned from here. I say, no, you got gray hair. And then you turn back. I got black hair. My hair is still black. You must be drunk. But now imagine you just turn in and your wife say, hey, babe, you got gray hair. I say, oh, I didn't know I got gray hair. Really, I got gray hair. And you just let go and I got gray hair. You've got nuts because you don't know who you are. The mirror just told you what you are. You know what that means? That is how it says when you turn to challenges and accept defeat so easily or give into pressure, you are as good as a man who just turned from the mirror and said, I got gray hair. You just accepted a lie. You just deceived yourself. You literally forgot who you are because you just saw who you are in the word. He says, by his stripes you are healed. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. And then the situation says you are broke. And they say, you see, I'm a broke ass. You just lie to yourself. You don't know who you are. That's what he's saying. The same way. You just turn from who you are and forgot yourself. But pastor, is that not how I felt? Our focus is not on our feelings. He says we worship God in the spirit. We have no confidence in the flesh. In other words, oh, you know, listen to this. It's big what I just said from Philippians chapter 4. It says, We are of the circumcision that worship God in the spirit, and our confidence is not in the flesh. Now, the word worship there is the word for service. Now, listen to this because this will blow your mind. Say, I hear. They tell us when you serve, you will bless your water and your bread. So I serve and have the confidence that my service will bring the blessing. He says our service to God is not in the confidence of the flesh. Does it mean we can't place demand on our service? Of course we can. But he's dealing with a, real, a, a, a deeper sense of relationship with God. Where you understand that the intercourse is beyond anything fleshy. I don't have to pray to feel like I prayed for me to know my prayer was answered. Do you understand? 
I don't need to worship with hands lifted up and feel those goose pimples all over my body to say, oh, the presence of God was here. The moment I lift up hands, because he said, I wish everywhere that hands be lifted up by brethren is a sweet smell to God. My confidence is in the one of God that said, when I lift up hands, is a sweet smell. No, when I felt like God received it. The same way, when I serve God in the house, the condition for the rest of my life is not by how I did it. Though it is important that I do it with a faithful heart and a heart of love. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So when you do otherwise, you say you forget who you are. Now, why did I touch this? We're in a system that is designed to break us. Every standard that the scripture defends is under siege. Faith, holiness, righteousness. All the principles of the kingdom are under siege. What then would the righteous do? The same way as we're designed uniquely and independently. Specially designed by God. Like I said, a saying from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Amplify says, you are God's masterpiece. Masterpiece. Another version says, show peace. Praise God. It says, created unto good work that you may show forth the praise of him. And that you may live the good life that God has preordained unto your glory. Praise God. I said, praise God. You were uniquely made. Now, because of the pressures, the system, it's so easy to lose our identity. Impatience is everywhere. It's as though to say, you know, the Bible talks of a generation that calls good evil and evil good. That calls right wrong and wrong rights. We are back to those kind of error. The governments of the world, they don't stand for what is right anymore. Rightness is not on defense. And so, if you are not on the system pattern, you are not on the right course. Same goes our dream. A lot, a, a lot of young folks just wake up with a big dream. They go to the studio and want to be the next rock star the next pop star, the next um, R&B star, whether gospel or circular, without going through the process, without understanding the nitty gritties of what makes a star. And the most devastating thing is the fact that many of them up there are stars by mistake. Time over time it has shown it. Drug addicts, Ending up in rehab centers. They can't keep a marriage. They can't even re handle their resources. Their life depends on pills. And not on the wisdom of God. And just to keep a false identity. They come on air and display all manner of grandeur. And the young man. Who has a great future? The young woman who has a great future thinks this is the way. And so you say, well, 
if I'm not nude, I don't think I can be a star. They begin to pick up the wrong ideology, the wrong belief system. And Satan is magnified by the second. Now, no man understands what it means to tread the path of patience. The churches would even help. Those who got there will tell you, if you don't ministry four years, you've not gotten 300 people, quit, you are not called. Chapter what verse what? The gospel we read about. Were they after the size of the church or the salvation reaches the whole earth? We read of Stephen who went street to street preaching the gospel as an evangelist. We read of Philip the same thing. Some mothers say, well, if you preach or you're poor, God didn't send you. Really? What about Peter? What about, you know, the scripture, ex, ex, oh boy. And then young minds who should go through the same process. These people knew what it meant to spend days, 40 days, 50 days fasting non-stop. Now, you will not be able to fast two hours, but you want to be a pastor of a thousand? Because the man told you you didn't meet that demand in four years, God didn't call you. You should go and ask yourself, what did he do within four years? You know, you hear the story of how he stayed in the mountain. How the rain came on him. No, you don't want to pay that price. Say, well, we're in the digital age. They've done it so that we can rest. And there's some lazy brats among associate pastors. Say, so see, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, our man of God has done all the labor. We are on his rest. That's why you are making noise and people are not getting blessed in your chapter. Just flying on the glory of another man. What then is the requirement? Does it mean that God does not want speed? God gives speed. But remember I told you, every one of us are created uniquely. Why did I say that? Because our parts are not the same. Our parts are not the same. 1 Corinthians 15. It said there is the glory of the sun. There is the glory of the moon. There is the glory of the star. They are all lights. The star is a light. The sun is a light. The moon is a light. It's about each one of them differing glory. But one cannot do without the other. They were all created to give light and bring beauty on the earth and save mankind that man may glorify God. Now the day the star says, hey, I want to be a son. He's lost his value. We read of galaxies. We read of different names that emit lights. All this play together so that we enjoy what we see today as light rays. Now, the day one says, no, I want to be this. And this said, no, I want to be this. I like the way this one shines. There's going to be chaos. There's going to be chaos. And that's what we see today. See all my mates, they've married. Why am I single? See all my mates, they've got a job. Why am I, what is wrong? Not all the time a Satan is wrong with you. Sometimes it's what you have not discovered about yourself. Have you even taken time to pray to know whether you are even supposed to find work? What if God was delivering from your, from, from your own era of destruction? There are people who went to do job and never came back alive. There are people who went for a job and they were abused sexually and lost their womb and everything in it. All in the name of a job.
just because we must measure up to the system. The families wouldn't even help it. Look at your mates. If you're a parent, never you dare. Never you dare. That child is a gift to you. He's got no mates. He's on his own path with God. Shout it, I'm on my path with God. Many of our parents that missed it are even the ones that haven't given us a problem. They missed their own path. They didn't even succeed enough to help us succeed. Now they have failed. And they are not putting the pressure of their failure on us while we are trying to find our path with God. Don't be deceived. You know, years ago, the Lord was teaching me these things. And I wrote a magazine that sold so well. And the Lord told me something. He said, listen to this, son. Never allow your family or anyone to mount pressure of their expectation on you while you're on your path. That's what you mean. He said, do your best within your capacity, not above your capacity. Because if they have lived well, it would have been a different story for you. He said, now, why you find your course with me? So that the next generation will be at ease. He said, don't let the failures of others mount the pressure on you that you're not doing well. Focus on me and run. And I've never compromised that all my life. Not extended family members. Say, Pastor Martin, you know you're not a big man, but I can see what God is doing with you. And there's this thing we need to do. I say, sorry, this is what I can do for you. As plain as it is, you ain't going to mount pressure on me when I'm not ready. Does it mean we're not involved? Of course we are. It's just having a right perspective of yourself. Some people can't go to some kind of meetings. Say, hey, I'm not going for that family meeting. No. Say, why? Everybody that goes to that meeting has a car. Don't have a car. So since when did car become the qualification to be a family member? Say, hey, they'll look down on me. No, they won't look down on you. They will look down on you because you look down on yourself. If you go with the right identity of who you are, while they are talking, the wisdom of God in you will be the solution. They will depend on your wisdom. But that's what the system creates for us. You see two friends meeting themselves after six years. One is looking at the shoe of the other. The other one is hiding leg. Instead of the joy of reunion, why one is excited because God has blessed him? The other one is looking at himself and not qualified and is hiding everything hideable and feeling inferior. What if God has just brought that person as a helper? Sometimes it's so bad the attitude that instead of a rejoicing, they give a cold attitude just to push it. Ah, God has delivered me. I just have to, to give him an attitude so that he won't intimidate me. What does he think he is? Well, some even a good hello and a hug has become, mm -hmm. because he wears a perfume that I cannot buy, what does he take himself for? Enmity. And he begins to, all manner of rubbish. Because of the system. And that's what we see everywhere today. A young man starts his dream. He just, this was when the opportunity came. Do you understand? He just started something. He just started off with life. What called the independence of life? No, he's not going to need mommy and daddy to support him anymore. But the guy is worth 20k. Do you understand? He's got a shop. He, I mean, he makes 20k. And here comes a friend who's been in the system. You don't know his family background. You don't have the same family background. You don't have the same anything. But you're the one that said you green the same neighborhood. Even in the neighborhood, you were in the ghetto. He was in the palace. Now he comes in and your life is in shambles. You now begin to hiss and insult this business. What kind of rubbish life is this? Look at it. How long will somebody suffer self? Not be saying God with his heart. Blah, 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 blah. And begin to despise everything about your dream. If that person was, if that person treated his own like that, will you, will you have been that way? Or if the person that became the source of that person had treated it that way, would you have had something to envy at all? But these are the chaos we see everywhere. And Christians are becoming victims. A 
lady reaches a certain age, even in church, all the mothers in church will not give them peace. When are you going to marry? A Christian sister, mother, is asking a Christian sister in church, when are you going to marry? Did you bring a husband? When did you hear that the woman should be the one looking for a husband? She's not the one to answer that question. Mothers should not be tormenting their daughters. Christian mothers in church should not be tormenting ladies. No! It is wrong! Because you are creating the pressure that is not scriptural. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 11 the concern, the concern of a young lady should be to please Christ who is her husband. In the service, the Bible says when the, when the man, there's going to be a man Why she's faithful in serving God, there will always be a man the only time we see the concern for a woman being towards a man was when God cursed Eve. That's the only time we saw it. He said, because of this thing you have done, that you allow Satan to deceive both of you. He said, now listen to this. Well, deceive you because you didn't deceive Adam. That's what Galatians tells us. He said, because of this, you have, that you've eaten this fruit. He said, now listen. In childbearing, you will bear in pains. Then he said, your desire shall be to the man. Meaning you will never, the Hebrew word actually said, you will never feel complete without a man. That was a cause from God. When we came into Christ, Paul explaining that said, the young virgin who was born with that curse, when you come into Christ, he said that curse was broken. Your desire now is towards Christ to please him. There's no more feeling of incompleteness because there's no man in your life. No, you don't have that pressure. You can't have that pressure. As you please him, there's a fulfillment of purpose. You feel because he's your Lord. Jesus is your Lord. Like Adam was Lord. By reason of a curse. And look, Paul came again and told the man, he said, listen, treat your wife as one with equal right to life not as your slave because in Christ independence has come but then we are the women are taught submission that is born out of love not out of force and so the independent lady is free of that curse but bring it on them again say how old are you and then before you know, we have a lot of Christian sisters that are already prostitutes. Because now when they dress, it's not more to please, to fit into the system of their work or to please God. It's not because they have to dress in such a way so that some brothers may have to see them. No more liberty of mind. When a brother innocently says something, is after something. Now you're not pushing yourself and putting yourself in... And, and some pastors even go and teach some kind of very harmful things. And then we held them on every social network. But the, the so-called titles of names. Teaching error. And because it appeases the senses, we praise them. And then the mother tells her, did you see? That's why you're missing it. The way you're dressing, nobody will come for you. It's true, there's a way to dress. But if a man comes after you for dressing, you're in trouble. Because you already know what dress it causes. Appearance is a loss of the eyes. It's a character, the virtue of holiness and godliness that Peter talked about that a man should be attracted to when he wants to settle with you. And as long as a man doesn't find it, give him any other thing. If he sees another option, he will leave you. There's no two ways about it. And that's why we have a lot of pains everywhere. Hallelujah. But that ought not to be so. Am I talking to somebody? Are you sure? And so itemize four. Can I have Zechariah now? Itemize four. Four points. On Sunday. Why people get into this? What was the first one? Pair group pressure, right? Number two. Family pressure. Number three. What I call it? 
Check your notes. I'm talking of the days of little beginning, please. Okay. That's Zechariah what? Four verse. Praise God. It says, does anyone Hallelujah. For verse 10. Does anyone dare despise this day of small beginnings? Now, I want us to read from verse 8. After that, the word of God came to me, Zechariah, unto Zerubbabel. It says, Zerubbabel started rebuilding this temple, and he will complete it. That thing that you're not proud about. Listen to this. There are three things you can never prosper. Three attitudes that, you, that will never make you prosper on something. Number one, you can never prosper on what you're not happy about. And that doesn't mean that the thing is a problem. Because in the science of the world, they tell you that do what gives you joy. No. In the calling of God and the purpose of God, it doesn't have to give you happiness. You generate it. Are you see here. So number one, you cannot prosper in what you're not happy about. But remember that happiness is not the fruit of the Spirit. So happiness is a choice. That's what it tells you. That means I can choose to be happy. Praise God. Hello. Happy. You see, oh boy. You know, I shout I'm liberated. I used to hear. It's just like years ago, um, I was talking with someone and I said, show me in the Bible where the Bible says you should marry who you love. If any of you know that verse in the Bible, stand up. Because that's what they tell us. Marry who you love. Marry your friend. Chapter what verse what? You know, when, when we hear some ideologies, it makes room for um, satisfaction of our soul. Listen, when the gospel begins to give you mental reasoning, satisfaction, be sure to check it out. Chapter 1 verse what? There's only one thing we saw. Husband, love your wife. It is a marry who you love. It's a love who you marry. So then, what is the marriage contract? Go back to the Bible and find out. Are ah, you see here? If we're going to dwell on this this month, I don't know if the Lord will want me to continue. We're going to touch a lot of things. Many of you, because you, your, your orientation needs to be reoriented. That's why sometimes when I see many of you, you just stay on some ministers. They say, ah, this is the, the, the woman of God or the man of God that's the anointed one for the gospel of relationship. I look at some of you, I've been laughing. I say, when you are true, poisoning yourself. Very soon, when you are done making mistake, because I know the next thing, when I start talking, it will be an offense. Some of you, you just speak to the... Because 
Be careful. God gave you a shepherd. You see that man's grace is for your people. I learned that a long time ago. A long time ago. Praise God. Are we still here? If you are here, shout a living amen. Is somebody getting blessed? It says, Zerubbabel has started rebuilding this temple. This is the message version. And he will complete it. That will be your confirmation that the God of the angels or angel armies sent me to you. Glory to God. What is God saying to you? That which you have started, that thing that looks shameful. That thing that you know this is God's idea for you. This is God's calling for your life. Right now, you're doing everything he needs. And I said three things you must not entertain. Number one, you can't prosper in what you're not happy about. Number two, you cannot prosper in what you are ashamed of. So it doesn't matter whether God called you into it. That's why some pastors will never, never reach a level with God. Because everywhere they go, the last thing they introduce is pastor. They call themselves every other name. But the thing that is on them, the real calling, you can't prosper there. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you. By the way, that is the highest office. The only office that a man cannot buy. The Bible said, no man taketh this honor upon himself except God gives it to him. Every other thing you can buy. And a man is ashamed of it. He's ashamed to tell his friends. He's into transportation. Why? Because when he says transportation, he's an Uber driver. It's reducing. It's reducing. Why did you do it? The Bible says there's profit in every labor. Some people have been faithful in it. Who could think and exercise their minds? Grew from having one car to another. You know, I was very young, very young, very young when I learned these things. Very young. My mom then, she used to spray bones. Bones, this um, flower, uh, what do you call it? Bones, right? Okay. Of flower rolls and egg rolls and all those stuffs. And um, beans pie, meat pie, fish pie. She was always creating something new with all the pies. And so, she started with two bicycles and then we had four. And now we had six. And guess what? They wouldn't let my parents take us to school. They would put me right in that show glass box in front and hang me there. I said, you take me out of this thing. They said, you are going right to school. We are happy to carry your gas. I didn't like it at first until I had to learn this is my father's trade. Praise God. Because it was expanding before long. Almost all the government schools in town, in Benin, then we had workers displaying show glass and selling everywhere. And it was the best. People rushed it. Now, that is not the, the essence of the story, but it was important for someone to hear. Praise God. Today you see her. She's a multimillionaire. She started from somewhere. She had to learn to fry bones. A caterer that went to catering school. There was no money for a restaurant. She had to fry bones. Now, there was another guy. His name was Isaac. Isaac became a very dear friend of mine. So that even when I got into secondary school, I looked for him when I went back to Benin from Wari. I went to look for him. And good enough, we're in the same street with my grandmother. Because I was little. All these other drivers, you know, when they carry... The cyclists, when they carry the bicycle and the egg rolls, when, when somebody talks to them, you could literally see how they quarrel and insult. Even when they are among the girls that help to do the packing, they insult. Do you think I'm your mate? Because I bring myself, this is a hair job. It's not the situation. I for come here. You will never hear Isaac say that. Isaac was such a joyful person. His spirit was always lighted. My dad loved him. My mom loved him. Something was just different about Isaac. Guess what? 
You know what Isaac was envisioning? One of those days when he carried me, I was just barely, I think I was somewhere around eight, primary four. And I heard Isaac say, he called me by my native name or DJ. He said, see this bicycle at the right? He said, one day in this town, now me go get all the bicycle that they hire. I say, hire. He said, ah, forget that. You know, your daddy and your mom, they're using this one for business. He said, but I'm already saving my money. Because I don't see this town, this thing they sell. And people cannot afford a new one. And true to it, he started. Guess what? By the time I returned back to Benin in my senior secondary school days, I found Isaac. The whole wheelbarrows, as low as wheelbarrow was, on that wheelbarrow, the whole wheelbarrows in the new Benin market, which was one of the biggest markets in Benin, he owned 80% of the wheelbarrows. So in the morning, they come to remit money in bulk. Some of the bicycles they use for hiring, um, these bicycle cyclists used for, actually those who go to fan, fan ice cream, to take on higher portraits and sell and bring back money. The bicycles that you could find will not give you a bicycle. He owned all of them. He had a fleet of businesses along those same things. Isaac was an illiterate. Now he just sits at home drinking kai kai, morning, afternoon, evening. I said, Isaac, you're suffering. He said, suffering. He said, I don't build house for village. Oh. My children are not in school. He said, I'm a big boy. So what do you mean? He said, that thing I told you then. From, you know what? Every other person we knew, many of them went into some, they are still as broke as so, some of them would have died broke. The guy had changed his life from a trade that was trash. Why? Because he had the right ideology of himself. He would never, you never, in fact, they used to call him Showboy. He went to put Isaac, Showboy. But action boy, he put action, he painted the bicycle, my dad's what he he said, daddy, leave it for me, action boy. So everywhere he went, they were calling him action boy, action boy. That became his business the rest of his life, action boy, Isaac, action boy. All his wheelbarrows, action boy. Came out of poverty, through wheelbarrow and hiring. I mean, came out of poverty, I saw it with my eyes. That was when I understood the scripture. He said, does anyone dare despise the day of small beginnings? They will change their tune when they see Jerobabe setting the last stone in place. Do you understand what it means? People might be mocking you. People might not see the beauty of what you are doing. They might say, see your mates. But the only thing is, are you diligent with what you are doing? Are you improving yourself and the quality of what you are doing? Do you believe in your path? Look at what it says. They will change their tune when they see Zerubbabel setting the last stone in place. That means what tune were they piping before? Mockery. Some of you, your parents, you don't have a face before them because of what they expect from you. They remind you of what they've invested. Different challenges from everywhere. And now you are hiding your face. Keep your shoulders high. You are the king's kid in the midst of the heats. No, you are going to be the one with the last laugh. There is only one thing you tell yourself. I am charting my course. I am charting my course. That is one of the famous words. There are two things you always hear me say. When I talk, I say, see, give it time. I know where I am going. You are the one that didn't know I was going somewhere. I know where I'm going, but very soon you will understand. And we are just starting. Hiya, Kabaya. Nothing is going to change my confidence. You know why? Because, because my confidence, my confidence for happiness or joy, the same thing with you. Your confidence for happiness or joy, your confidence for survival is not in that thing. That is a tool to be a blessing to the world. It's not what makes you survive. You are not a survivor. You are reigning in Christ. The Lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. It's just a means to be a blessing. And I'm not going to chicken out because someone wants me to feel bad about my life. I'm going to stay on course. Jump to your feet and pray in the Holy Ghost.
Paramasataramandia. Several of you have faced souls. Too much expectations. Some of your colleagues come around with some of the best cars. Don't be intimidated. Rejoice with them. He said rejoice with them that rejoice. Mourn with them that mourn. Why? Because you know, you know the part of the just is like a shining light that shines bright and brighter to the perfect day. It's not who started first. We are all arriving in glory. We are all arriving in glory. When you see those things, it's an assurance that the same God who was faithful to Brother John is faithful to me. He will not call me to leave me in shame. No. I'm set on a path that leads to success. I'm success personified. He said they will change their soon when they see Martin setting the last stone in place. Going back to the vision, the messenger angel said, the seven lives and the seven eyes of God, probably in the dark corner of the world, like searching lights. He said, who dares to despise? Who dares to despise? Who dares to despise? Stop reducing yourself. God is only beginning with you. Stay focused. Stay diligent. Improve yourself. Improve the quality of your service. Be the best of you. Don't try to be somebody else. Be the best at what you do. Make it so best that when they see, they say, this is so so brand. Nobody does it your style. You are a style of your own in Christ. You are the beauty of Christ manifested. Do it in such a way that others will want to do it your way. You are unique. You are unique. It might be small now, but maintain your uniqueness. You are a brand going somewhere to explode. Lift up those hands and worship him. Nothing should take your place. No. He said, wash your separators from the love of God. Nothing. You heard me. These are not the things that determine your life. There are only sources for you to be a blessing to your world. Your success, your provision is in the hand of God. There's help all around you this month. I said there's help all around you this month. And God will shift the work of your hands in glory. Yes. The right people. The right people that should discover your gifts. The right people that should discover your callings. The right people that should discover your service. Whether you are in the dark, whether you are in the closed door, whether in your room, as long as you are faithful, I hear the Lord say, I'm bringing them to discover you. Joseph didn't need to come out of the prison. He was not in the shop. He was not in the costless plaza. He was not among the magicians that could give the free dreams. The guy was locked in the worst of prisons. But while he was there, he was cheerful. He was joyful, praising God. And God sent the king. This month of turnover, God is turning and turning and turning. And turning and turning and turning. Until your turn has come. And they will say for you. Yes. That's the key scripture for the month. He said, I will turn. I will overturn. I'll overturn. Until him who is right to own it will come. You are him that is right. This is your time. There's an overturning. There's an overturning. And from this day, it is coming to you. Come and shout. Shout and rightly positioned for harvest. Give him praise everywhere. 
Atara Mangura Basa.